Um, now I'd like to introduce our guest of honor, we have Rokaya Diallo, an activist, journalist, speaker, newsmaker. The discussion tonight is going to focus on blacks in France. What is the situation here? Is there more opportunity available in the US given its history of racism uh, relative to contemporary France? So with that, I'm gonna pass the microphone to Joel, okay. and we'll get started. We'll get, we'll sit and see, I think <laughs> that might be easier. <laughs> if you guys have heard, uh, James Brown, they used to introduce James Brown as the hardest working man in show business. Kai <laughs> <laughs> Diallo is the hardest working woman in French journalism. <laughs> She does, uh, she does, among many things, two shows on BET France. Yes, there is a BET France. <laughs> Thought you got away, huh? <laughs> uh, she's a regular guest on many talk shows, news programs. She's written a graphic novel. She's written books about secularism, for ch how to teach your children about secularism. Um, I'm trying to think of all the other things. I first met her when she uh, was doing a show on the uh, Congressional Network LCP uh, called Ego Me Pato, <laughs> Equal But Not Too, which had the right tone because it was one of the few, the only show I've seen in France that systematically looked at discrimination and opportunity in France. She did shows on things like why there were so few black models on French fashion magazines, for example. Uh, she did a piece on uh, a orientation that the Canada did for jobs in Quebec and noted how 75% of those who attended were minorities. So it shows you that there was some issue, that they felt there was a greater opportunity abroad. And the reason we wanted to have this conversation is I've been hearing from black French friends they look at America in much more glowing terms than African Americans look at America in many cases. Uh, seeing an opportunity, an organization, a um, things going on that are not happening in France. And I'm going to start with, let's start getting Rokaya's perspective on France as a black woman. Uh, she's been called a racist, an apologist for Islamic uh, militancy, a defender of the veil. I'm trying to think of all the other things they've said about you. Uh, why do they dislike you so much? <laughs> thank you, thank you for inviting me. I'm really happy to be here tonight. Um, well, the reason why I'm targeted by so many, so much criticism. Uh, I think that there are several reasons. The first one is that I'm one of, I'm one of the few people of color who appear uh, regularly on TV to uh, as a pundit. And the other reason is that being black, I tackle racism. And I think that um, people would uh, expect from someone like me to be grateful to be where I am because we're not that many. And um, and I feel that I'm seen as someone very arrogant because I, you know, I'm not like, thank you for having me. <laughs> uh, I, you know, so, so, you know, being there as a, as a woman, um, as a, because we are not many women uh, around the table when it comes to debating uh, French politics. I was just on LCE tonight and we were five around the table. I was, I was the only woman. And most of the, the men who were there are, are from other generations. So um, that means old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like they, they are the ones that I used to see when I was a kid. So it's um, <laughs> in the early eighties. <laughs> so um, so that and and we I think that we live in a kind of denial in France that uh, race doesn't exist. So we don't speak that much about race. And when we, we, we so. Having such, um, you know, addressing race very frankly makes people uncomfortable, and instead of questioning themselves, they prefer to attack me. I, I guess they prefer that's, to, what? to attack me and to say that I'm the problem, and that I, um, I think that we're going to discuss that, but I, that I import um, American ideas in France because we don't have race here because we're all French. 
they are the same. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's one of the reasons, I think. <laughs> Yes, the, one of the most vicious attacks on Rokaya was that she was bringing Anglo-Saxon ideas Ooh. about race. <laughs> you know, whenever they, whenever they talk about Anglo-Saxon, it's not a positive <laughs> thing. Racism there. They haven't gotten over the British occupation of Bordeaux. <laughs> but uh, you have, you, when I first met you, you were going regularly to the Black Caucus weekend in Washington. This is a weekend, for those that don't know, in September, where the, all the members of the Black Caucus have a sort of think tank gathering of, of politics, elected officials from all over the country, uh, panels, discussions. Why, uh, why did you go to the Black Caucus? What was the point of that? So it was, um, at, at that time, I was working for Canal Plus. Uh, for the morning show, the morning news show, and um, I went there to report about the way minorities uh, organize in, in politics because I knew that it wasn't possible to have such an organization in France, like having black uh, uh, black MPs, uh, because there were not that many at that time. I think there were uh, there was only one at that time, <laughs> so it would have been difficult. In you know anyway, but um, it was interesting to see that it was that there was a room for uh, politicians, black politicians, to organize in order to push the issues that were affecting the black community, and it wasn't the way we used to think in France because um, you know it was very different. So that was the reason why I, I was sent there to to speak about that, especially because uh, I started um, TV one year after, after the first election of Barack Obama. So there was also a kind of fascination uh, for the US um, in France. So that, that, there was that kind of interest for you know, what uh, uh, was affecting the black community. And, uh, and it wasn't, it, it, as long as I report on the US and not about France, my work is not seen as negative. Like it's okay to speak about race when it comes to the US. It's like it's just fine. It, I ha it's more difficult when I try to do the same in France. <laughs> You've made some parallels in the way police behave, uh, the, the violence against minorities in the US and the one in France and how it's reported in France very differently. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, so I, I, first I want to make a point. Uh, there is a difference between uh, the level of uh, brutality in the US and in France. Uh, I think that in the US there are more than 1,000 uh, people who are killed by the police every year. In France, it's only 50. So it's still too much, but it's not the same because we don't have the same culture of weapons. So that's, that's very different. But still in France, 90% of the people who die uh, in the end of the police are blacks or Arabs and most of them are men from the poor neighborhoods. That means that uh, people from uh, the minorities are over-policed. If you are a young uh, man seen as uh, Arab or black, you are 20 times more likely to be checked than if you belong to any other category. So that means that there is still that, there, there is also here in France the same bias. But when um, a case of police brutality occurs in the US, it's very well reported in the French media. We can read about institutional racism, about the fact that the person who uh, died was uh, black, belonged to a minority, and that the police officer most, most of the time is white. But when it comes to France, you have no mention of the color of the victim. Like, you can guess it from the name. For example, Adama Traoré, you see the picture, you see it's his name. Adama Traoré is a young man who died uh, in the hand of the gendarme, so it's like the military police, um, two year, uh, three years ago in 2016. Uh, he was 24, he was checked for, you know, for his ID, he didn't have, he hadn't done nothing wrong, but he was arrested because he, was, he, he tried, because he didn't have his, his ID, he tried to run, and he was arrested and he died uh, in the police station. He was black, but when you see the French reports about that, you see no mention of his color. And it's very different when, it, when there is a coverage of a, the same kind of news in the US. So that's like, we don't like to, to, um, to um, you know, underline the fact that in France, race is also a factor when it comes to, to, to police brutality. 
And, be, and the, the other thing is that we know very well the names of the people who were killed by the um, US police. Like we know Trayvon Martin, we know Eric Garner, we know Sandra Bland, we know their names. But if you ask to someone to name someone French, no one. No one. Like Adama Traoré in 2016, Ziad and Gunnar in 2005. But no Ali Ziri, no Amadou Koumé, uh, no uh, um, Gaï Kamara. All those names are, are unknown from most of the people. And that's an issue, because it means that we don't know about people who are killed in our own country. We know more because in the, in the US there is the, the media coverage, but there are also uh, movies and uh, you know they exist also in the in the in the hip hop culture. They are named in the in the in the, so in the you know in the songs. Um, so that's I, I would say that's the main difference. And in France, I have been in trouble many times for addressing institutional racism, saying that yes. institutional racism existed. Yeah. I have is, been, is, is this is this self censorship? It's no it's self censorship by the by the media. I think it's uh, no, it's an, an awareness. It's more that they don't know. They think that like if you, if I say that no uh, no but but the press they they could report the names no but I mean, is it self censorship is it is the is the is the media yeah. stopping it, it, are they being stopped no uh, they're not they're 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 not a I think there's a law in yeah. France that you don't mention yeah. uh, the race of a yeah. person yeah. like in the school when I went to elementary school in in New York we had to you know write down our race. That's that's illegal in Iran. Mm -hmm. uh, that became a law so it's some time ago. So we're we're after we're we're too much, we have to Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Go on, guys. We wait till the end. Yeah. 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 We'll we'll take questions. Yeah. There'll be plenty of time yeah. for okay. questions and comments. Uh, I wanted to ask you about uh, just to back up a little bit and talk about what is the opportunity for a young black person in France today? What are the opportunities? And how do you compare them to, say, what you see in the U.S.? Uh, well, <laughs> it's a big question. Um, what I would say, I don't know if I can answer to your question in the same way, but I, I, I would say that um, maybe um, institution, institutional racism is, is stronger in, in France. I would say that there is less representation of people of color in, 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 uh, in the elite, like in the elite, uh, like in the top positions. Um, if you go to, you know, people who own media, who are in, in, who are in politics, uh, who are in, you know, in the, at the head of the biggest companies, you never see any, you know, I, I wouldn't restrict that, um, that reflection to black people because I think that uh, the same issues affect also uh, people from Arab or Asian background, but, you know, blacks and Arabs are very close in, this, in the way they are treated in France. Um, so it's like, or when you watch TV, there is a real lack of representation uh, in the in like in the news show, but also in fiction, like in films, for example, uh, in uh, in TV series. There, are, like we have, like the first, even in my generation, the first black people that I saw on TV were were from American series. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, and still today, most of the black people we see on TV are from American American series. If you see the report from the CSA. Mm -hmm. Which is the equivalent to the <coughs> FCC. Uh, we can see that the first in the percentage of people from uh, of minority people who are represented, many of them come from the U.S. representations. Mm -hmm. So I would say that the difference is there, but at the same time, uh, maybe um, in the general population, people tend to mix more than in the U.S. because we didn't have like segregation on the French soil. So if you go to like. Uh, weddings or even friendships, I think that people are less segregated um, than in the US. Like the, the, to me, the, the, the segregation is, is really in the, in the most elite um, you know, parts of the society. Like for example, as a kid, I didn't, I didn't feel black because my neighborhood, my neighborhood was very mixed, but it was at the end of my studies and now as a journalist that I really feel that I'm always the only one. It's like, but in my like in my daily life, I can feel that I you know I know I know much more black people in the U.S. than in France because I don't know black people you know people tend to introduce me to black people and at some point yeah it, and it doesn't happen that much in France it's like it's very different. Yeah. Mm. <laughs>